Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about using the modular gameplay system with the Game Features plugin to be able to subscribe to an event signifying that pawns are ready. I also just started learning this about a week before I recorded this video, so I am no expert. I looked through Lyra and some documentation that will be linked in the description to help piece together how this works and to make a bare bones version for our needs. The first thing we do is enable some plugins. So we go in plugins here, you can type in modular. We need both game features and modular gameplay. This will pop up a message because they're in beta. Those enabled, we need to restart the editor. So then we get this warning saying the asset manager settings do not include an entry for assets of type game feature data, which is required for game feature plugins. It also conveniently just gives you this link, which will fix the problem. So you just click that, adds it to the default game I and I, and we're good to go. So with that created, I'm going to create a new C++ class. This will be based on pawn component. So I'm using a pawn component for this functionality, but you could also use an actor component if you wanted the actors to include the init state functionality instead of pawn component. Since I'm only going to be adding that functionality to pawns, this, this is what I'm using. So I'm going to call this TDS pawn manager component. So as usual, that will create it. It will do a live coding or rebuild. When that is done, we can close the editor. Wait for the red bar at the bottom to uh, go away, hit reload. All right, so the first thing we want to add, because we included new plugins that also have C++ parts, we add modular gameplay and game features here to our uh, dependency module names. And here I'm just going to paste in a bunch of stuff. Double click this. We're also inheriting from this interface. And we need to include a header file. And as usual, this needs to go before the generated. If you put that after, it will give you a compiler error. All right, so we're adding a constructor. We're uh, adding a vector feature name. This needs to be unique uh, per feature. We're going to override some functions from the interface. Get feature name will just return the name of the feature. And then can change init state, handle change init state, and check default initialization will be used to process the state chain. Uh, we're adding a convenience function so that in Blueprint, we can just get the pawn managing component from an actor. And we're also overriding uh, on register begin and end play and tick component in our CPP file. So we're accessing our TDS file, uh, which I'll add something to in a minute, uh, the character file, uh, so we can access the function we're adding to it. We're defining our feature name as pawn manager. We're enabling ticking for this component. And then when this component is registered, we're just making sure that the pawn is valid and that there's only one um, pawn manager component attached to that pawn. And then we call register init state feature. In begin play, we're calling bind on actor init state changed. We're doing it for all features, which is why this is named none. If we included a, a feature name, then it would only give us the state changes for that feature. We're not actually using this functionality outside of just calling it here. Uh, and then lastly, we will change the state to spawned and call check default initialization. 
what that is, is it's a function where we define our state change. In Lyra, there's four states, um, spawned, there's two others like data initialized, something else, and then gameplay ready. Uh, we don't need the middle ones because we are not using the pawn data that Lyra is set up for. However, because we are not using that, we effectively need something to validate that the pawn is ready, which we're doing um, a little lower. And then we're calling continue init state chain, which is part of the framework, and that will call can change init state. If that returns true, then it will call or change the state and call handle init change state. So in our can change in its state, we're basically, if our if its initial state and it's our desired state is spawned, we're just ensuring that a pawn um, exists, or rather that the pawn the pawn pointer is is valid. So that's that's happening ba uh, right away. So we're calling begin play, check default initialization is called from there. It calls the continue in its state change that will result in can change in its state being called. It'll come through here because that was the first state we set it to return true, it'll handle that state change, we'll get this message. Um, the desired state is not gameplay ready, so that will be ignored. And then we're using tick component to call check default initialization again. That will do the same thing, it calls that, which calls this, and then the state it will be in is we're in in its spawned, or in its state spawned, and we want in its state gameplay ready. To validate that, we're basically getting our character, calling an isready function, all right, and this could just be like this. I have to clean that up uh, beforehand. So if it's ready, it returns true, and then uh, it will change the, officially change the state to uh, gameplay ready. So with that set up, we have our right these gameplay texts. We need to define those. So we're doing that in TDS in our base uh, file. So the way we're doing that is we're using these macros to uh, declare a gameplay tag. Uh, previously, we've created gameplay tags in the editor, which results in adding them to an INI file, default gameplay tags. So this may look familiar. Uh, this is another way to do it. Uh, and if you want to access them in C++, this is kind of the uh, recommended way of doing it. Um, to use these macros, we also need to include up here before the dot generated, include native gameplay tags dot h. So that means in our CPP file, then we also need to add a corresponding section, which is giving a comment to those uh, tags. We're then going to add our is ready functionality to the character. So I'm creating this as a bool value, which is available in Blueprints, because we're going to set it there. Since the uh, TDS character is the component, or the pawn, which will be used in the, the game feature section, we need to also override pre-initialized components and end play. And then I'm just putting call to is already here, which is just returning b is ready in our character CPP file. We need to include, start right up here with the other component stuff, game framework component manager, so that in begin play, before we call the super version, we're going to call game framework component managers, send game framework component extension event. And we're sending along a game actor ready. We're then adding the two other functions here, Pre-initialized components to call add game framework component receiver. This is a uh, comparable to calling add receiver inside of blueprints. And then in end play, we need to also remove game framework component receiver. Without those three functions, the game feature will not be added um, as part of the, the modular gameplay plugin. So with that, we'll compile. I'm sure there will be no errors. Crossing my fingers. Cool. Cool. 
So with that set up, we go back into plugins and we're going to actually create a plugin. So in the current version, it's up here, the button, used, the button used to be at the bottom right. We're going to hit add. We want a game feature, content only. Click that, put in the name. We're going to name this Pawn Manager. We'll just put the author as Alamar and we'll leave description blank. Actually, no, we'll say Pawn Manager. Uh, when we create that plugin and show the content directory. Down here, you can see now that plugins pawn manager content is here and it created a data asset, which is what it opened. And that's our actual uh, game feature. So in here, we can then go and edit the plugin by clicking that to pop up that window. Or if we go back here to plugins, if you've done all this and your plugin's just not working or let me throw that down again, this, uh, this folder is not visible. That's because back in plugins here, since we made a plugin, we also need to enable that plugin. So that, that did happen in this case. If you hit edit here, it will bring up the same window. Our initial state, if it's not active, when you launch the editor in the future, it may, well, not be active. So I'd like to leave, I'd like to leave this as active. Some, uh, some suggest leaving it as another state, but then again, you need to activate it anytime you want to use it, which is a bit of a pain. But you also make sure it's not active when you're editing uh, the plugin. So the way that this functionality works is that we have created this game feature uh, for the purpose of adding an action. We are using an add components action. So once we expand all this, add another one here, expand that. What's actually happening is when the actor is created, the actor class that we supply here, it will attach the component that we supply here. So in here, we want our TDS character. And it's going to be attaching the pawn manager component. And again, if you did not add the calls in the TDS character class or in the blueprint, the add receiver call, then this, this just won't be attached. All right, so with that started, you can now see the log line that we put in. So handle change in its state is going from none to the spawned value. You can see that there's nothing after that. And the reason is because that is ready on the character is still false. So to do that, we want to go into our third person character. And when we're done, in our begin play, when initialization is all complete, we then want to then All set is ready and check that. So now what's happening is the uh, the component is being added. You don't see it in here because it's only added once it's uh, actually created. On tick character, it's just checking over and over until basically this is ready. Um, all of the characters that were created based on TDS character will have that. And then once they are all ready, the log now shows the current or the uh, spawn state becomes the game ready, gameplay ready. Now, if I were to also go in, so if I throw an enemy character in the level, if I then hit play, you can see in the log that uh, nothing has changed. So we still have our TDS character um, component added. It, it changes the state, waits for is ready, changes the state. Our enemy character is based on TDS enemy character. That is a class that is derived from character, not TDS character. TDS enemy character does not have the calls to the framework to allow it to have a component attached to it. So if you want it added to your enemy characters that are launched or spawned with the level, then uh, that, that would be an option. So the reason to use this uh, functionality is basically in an actor like our mission table, 
if we want to ensure that all the pawns that we care about are ready before we do some, you know, well, before we access something about them, for example, our player character manages the widgets and we want to access some functionality in those widgets somehow from our mission table, which we may do in a future video coming up next. Uh, the way we would do that is in here, we can call our get player pawn. With that, we're going to cast to our uh, third person character, which is based on our TDS character. And using that, we can use or call the find pawn manager component. That's the utility function that we added in C. So, with that, then we're going to use register and call for for init state change. So this function is effectively what we did all this setup for. And what it is, is we can put our tag in here, which is our init state. Gameplay ready. When our player's pawn manager component has moved into that state, then this delegate gets fired. So for that, we can add a custom event. We'll just call this uh, gameplay ready event. And for this video, I'm just going to throw out a print. So the reason we use this functionality is because in Unreal, when you have a bunch of different actors, they're all doing their thing, they're initializing uh, in begin play or similar, and there's no guarantee that the player pawn is ready before uh, our mission table is ready. So this functionality is just ensuring that we have been able to set is ready on our player and potentially other pawns um, before this event happens. So when the character is ready, the, the component will set that state to gameplay ready. This will get fired off. This uh, Boolean is if it's already in that state, it should call immediately. So if the third person character is ready before this mission table is ready, call immediate would means it would just happen. Uh, if it's not, then the delegate will be called when that state gets changed. So it's hard to tell really in this video because there's not a whole lot going on, but you can see that the uh, the state is spawned, it gets set to gameplay ready, and then this event happened as a result of that that state being changed. Thanks for watching. If you like the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.